championship against Deontay Wilder. Here is the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury. Christina, I tell you. What's up, Tyson? How are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Thanks for joining us here today. Finally, fight week. God, I feel like it's been forever to get to this point. How 20 months in the making, so uh, we're all glad we're here, and it's, uh, I'm glad I brought a good British weather with me. Nice and cold for Las Vegas. You actually have a shirt, uh, a vest on, though, this time. <laughs> now, look, Deontay was up here earlier. Malik Scott, focused, ready to go. I know you don't pay attention to social media, you don't pay attention to what has been said, but he was asked about if he was going to be a more refined or a brand new Deontay Wilder, and he feels like it's gonna be the reintroduction of him. Do you really, really feel that there's anything new in this amount of time that has passed that the world could see from him? I think you could go to college and get a master's degree in nearly two years. So for a boxer to change his style, it's very easy to do. But no matter what Deontay Wilder does, I'm still going to knock him the fuck out. In how many rounds, Tyson? Quick time, quick fashion. Let's go. So get your beers and get in your seat, quiet. Or... Uh, like my trainer Sugar Hill says, we just bang and get it over with. Now, let's talk about Sugar for a minute. Yeah. You've had extended time now to prepare and work with him. How good was it for you guys to have a little bit, albeit because of COVID, but once you were back in the gym, to just work on that rapport even more and on that power, like he said? Yeah, it's been good, you know. We've had such a long time in the gym together. Um, we've been on holidays, we've hung out. We've done so much stuff, uh, Christine. It's been unbelievable. We chilled out in Vegas for quite a few months. We've been training the full time. Um, not had the fights, unfortunately, but COVID fucked up the uh, world. So, What do you make of everything, although you don't pay attention to it, you've been asked about it time and time again, about basically him not accepting the loss and there being a, a handful of other reasons about why you could have possibly won that fight. What do, you, what do you say and what do you think about that mental fortitude to not actually accept what happened in the last fight? It just shows you that... Um, I'm living in Wilder's mind rent free the whole time, two years. Every, t every time he looks in the mirror he sees Tyson Fury. Every time he goes to bed, before he closes his eyes at night he sees a Gypsy King. And everything he wakes up and thinks about in the morning, he thinks of Tyson Fury. Even when he goes to sleep at night of his missus, he's thinking of Tyson Fury. You know, it's, uh, it's crazy. It must be crazy to be obsessed with a, with a man like me so much in his life that... <laughs> crazy it's just it's just crazy but you know i've not really made too much of what he says because this time i'm going to put a knuckle duster on each hand and then i'm going to go into the fight i might even put double knuckle duster a couple egg weights extra yeah yeah, yeah maybe <laughs> or maybe I even bring like a steel baseball bat into the ring maybe in my trousers or something who knows can't tell can't tell with the gypsy king i'm magic i'm like houdini let's go champ Let's go, Much of you, you said that this is not round one of the third fight, but instead round 20. Yes. For those people that were under a rock or have not watched either of the two fights or are still even on the fence about coming out to Las Vegas and joining us, what can they expect from the Gypsy King in round 20 of this third fight? We're just going to get straight on the front foot, straight at him, and start trading straight away from round one. You know, Wilder's the biggest puncher in the history of our sport. Um, but I've got the biggest balls in the history of our sport, as I've proved many, many times. Um, it's going to be exciting, you know. Wilder's a dynamite puncher, and, you know, as we've seen over the last few months, we've seen the heavyweight landscape change so much. Um, but I'm still on form, I'm still doing what I've got to do, and I'm the only undefeated world heavyweight champion left. The only one standing. Crazy. I, I remember speaking to, this is a little, a little bit of a throwback, but uh, Andy Lee after he fought Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. And he said, when, Ch when I hit Chavez Jr. with the hardest punch that I could hit him with, and he took it on the chin and continued to come forward, I was mentally broken in that fight. I knew from that point on, it was over. You took two huge right hands from Deontay Wilder in the second fight. He floored you twice in the first fight, and you got back up. What does that do to a fighter mentally when you know you've taken pretty much everything he's had to offer and still won the fight? You know, I've never experienced it because I've never actually, um, someone's never done that to me. But Wilder's still 
still thinking about what happened in 2018. How the fuck did he get up in round 12 after being knocked out? It's like you hit a guy with your best shot, you knock him out, he gets back up, gets back into you and then does exactly what he says he's going to do in the rematch. Um, and takes me out, you know, so there's not much I can say, I'm not here to slate Deontay Wilder, he is what he is. Oh, now? <laughs> Honestly, I think the guy's a real piece of shit, he's a real piece of work, and nobody or nothing will ever change my mind. When we was first going to fight, I thought he was a decent man, like a family man, you know, doing it for his kids and all that, but now I know he's a real piece of garbage, piece of rubbish, um, and I'm going to knock him spark out on Saturday night, and I cannot wait to get him in that ring and give him a good hiding, for sure. I might even take it slow with him. I might take it slow and punish him, make him say no mas. <laughs> okay, a little, a little no mas in there. All right, we're going to open it up for the fans, um, actually for the media to ask some questions. I feel like we're getting close. I know, come over here. <laughs> Shall we dance, Tyson? Yes, uh, I, want to, I, I would love to dance. All right, where's the DJ? Hit the music. Oh. <laughs> All right, we're going to go. Gareth has a question right here. Go ahead, Gareth. Tyson, do you have to be at least a little cautious that he may have improved in the last 20 months under Malik Scott and Don Howes? I'm, I'm really hoping he's improved because I, I'm here for a fight and I want a challenge. I didn't come all over the America and, and be undefeated for 13 years not to get a challenge, Gareth. You know me. Harder the challenge, the better I fight. So hopefully he comes and he hope he's 50, 60% better than he was last year or the year before because I know I've got better and I'm, I'm uh, I don't need to get better because there's an old saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So we'll see, but I believe I've improved 30, 40, 40% 40 than uh, I was before. So if he hasn't, then he's in for a real, uh, a real uh, beating, for sure. Uh, and finally, you, you have a home here, you're licensed here. He's American, but do you feel like the home fighter? For sure, this is Las Vegas. I was built and born for this. Yeah. Las Vegas yeah. is the home of the Gypsy King, yeah. for sure. I mean, look at the outfit. Is he not? Is he not ready for Las down. Vegas? All right, next question, right over here. Tyson, do you feel that this is a do-or-die fight for Deontay, a win in his career's done? Okay. Um, yep. When I beat him this time, his career's over. Yep. Just like if, if AJ loses again to Usek, his career's over too. So, um, yeah, he really needs a win, but he ain't getting it, that's for sure. Uh, Tyson, what weight are you planning on coming in at, and what advantage do you expect that to give you? I'm going to come in at heavyweight, and, uh, <laughs> um, you know, what do you think, Christina? Like 270-ish, maybe? No, you didn't say that before. 265 is what I said. <laughs> it's all a guess. Yeah, it was a good guess. It was a good guess. But listen, it doesn't really matter what weight heavyweight comes in at. Whether he comes in at 210 pounds, or he comes in at 310, it's really unimportant, you know. I recently watched a documentary on um, the great Sonny Liston, and they said he was the first of the real big men. He weighed 215 pounds and he was six foot one. So, Anybody can knock anybody out in, in any size. A little man can knock out a big man, as we've seen with David and Goliath all of years ago. So it's not really the size of the man, it's the fight within the individual, that's for sure. All right, I think that's it. Thank you, Tyson, for your time. We really appreciate it. That was quick. That's it. Well, they're gonna, I'm sure they're going to follow you back over here and ask you some more. Give it up for them.